I uh, have this little, this little puppy, and it has a very original name. Um, it's one of the most unique names. It's, it's a little Yorkie uh, poodle. It's a Yorkie poo. You have those here? It's a little yipper dog, you know, those yip, 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 you know, just, 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 you know, I mean, big dogs. He'll just yip at big dogs, and then he'll run and stand behind you when they look at you. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody have a little dog like that? It's like, to, I would expect you to have one like that, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, so. Yeah, stud collar, that's it. You know, killer, killer dog this big, you know. This dog of ours, he, he literally would, uh, literally, if you walked in, in our house, he, he, he would lick you to death. You know, this is this, is this dog. And th there's something spiritual in this. I'm going somewhere. Um, this dog is, is pretty interesting. Um, I, I, one day, I was, I was looking at the dog. And as I was looking at the dog, the Lord just kind of put something in my heart. And, and I thought, I wonder what it'd be like to see from Skip's perspective. Now his name is Skip. <laughs> real, really, really, I mean, we looked at him, he skipped around. We said we're going to name him something really out there. Why, let's call him Skip. So Skip, Skip is on the ground, and, and, you know, and, and literally his head is probably about four or five inches from the ground, okay? So, so he's, he's down here, and I thought, I wonder what, what it's like to see what he sees. So I got down on the ground in my house, and I'm laying there like this, and I'm thinking... Huh, I wonder what life would be like from this perspective all of my life. You know what? You know what? I got 20 minutes. Can you just hang on here? Mary, just stop him. Okay. So now the videos are going. God help me. So I'm, I'm down here, and I'm looking around, and I'm thinking, wow, he sees stuff that I don't see. And, 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 I'm, and I'm looking from the, looking down, and I'm looking under our refrigerator, and I'm seeing stuff that I haven't seen. I mean, the whole house is immaculately clean, but the bottom of the refrigerator, I'm thinking, that, this is what he's seeing. So then I thought, you know what? That's pretty pathetic to have to see life from that pers pers perspective all his life. You know, he only gets to eat when we put stuff in his bowl. He doesn't get to choose when he gets to go places. He doesn't get to, that's pretty much where he lives. And then I thought, you know what? There's another thing. I, I, this dog needs to know what it's like to get to see what I see. So I picked the dog up, and I lifted him all the way up in the air. <laughs> now, when I got him in the air like this, the dog is just shaking. <laughs> like, like I'm holding him up. You know, and, and it's so funny because, you know, dogs, dogs will look at I me. Mean, my, dog, my dog will look at me and, and just come in and go. I often wonder what he's thinking, you know. That is really a ridiculous outfit you're wearing today. Why do you do what you do? You know, so, so he's thinking all these thoughts. And I've got him up there and he's just, you know, shaking like that when I've lifted him to a higher height. I wonder what it would be like if we could see things from a perspective that God really wants us to see them from. We have been looking and not seeing everything that God has, has prepared, all this stuff he's got for us from this angle. We're seeing underneath. We're, not seeing, we're to be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. We're to be the people of God that God raises to a whole nother place. And the funny thing is when he starts raising us up to that level, we start to shake. Oh, God, what are you doing? I'm lifting you up to the place where you were supposed to be all along. I'm lifting you up to see what you were supposed to see all along. How many of those are there? Okay, pass those out real quick if you would. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to go into uh, an entire message here. I, I just want to share a, a couple thoughts with you uh, at this point. Um, you know, it's so funny. Um, uh, we say, if, if you don't have money, we say you're poor. Y'all say the purr, right? The purr. So, so here are some signs that you might be purr. And I don't know if you, if you, if you have the expression uh, about American Express, but Ameri if, you might be purr if American Express calls and says, leave home without it. You, you might be purr if you're formulating a plan to rob the food bank. You might be purr if you rob Peter and then rob Paul. Do, do long-distance uh, co companies call you guys to switch over to their company? Yes. 
Does that happen around here? You might be purr if long distant companies don't call you to switch. <laughs> You, you might be purr if you finally clean your house hoping to find change. <laughs> you might be purr if you think of a lottery ticket as an investment. <laughs> you might be purr if at communion you go back for seconds. <laughs> so, so, so God doesn't want you purr. I, purr. That just... It, I know that sounds as funny to you as po. As po. We just say po. I mean, if you're really, if you're really poor, you po. <laughs> you, you're just downright po. And God don't want you po. He just don't want you po and he don't want you purr. <laughs> so when God begins to speak into our life, he, he, he loves us from a whole other perspective. He loves us, and, and, and he sees from a whole nother place. Now, um, there used to be this song, I think Bette Miller used to sing this song, uh, From a Distance, God is Watching Over Us from a Distance. Anybody ever heard that song? He's, uh, he, he might be, but I, I think he's a, he's a much closer God than that. I think he's really, really an up-close God. And I, and, I, and I think that he cares about the smallest of details. He wants us to see from a whole other perspective. He came down here to get close to us. And so as I was meditating on this, I shared a couple of these concepts before, but, but it, it just keeps coming in my heart again and again. And, this, and hear, what, hear, what, hear what I feel like the Father's saying to us. I'm not just your choreographer. I'm your dance. I'm not just your bread maker. I'm your bread. It wasn't enough to be your builder. I had to be your chief cornerstone and your firm foundation. It wasn't enough to be your astronomer. I had to become your bright and morning star. It wasn't enough to be your gardener. I had to become your crushed lily of the valley and your crushed rose of Sharon. It wasn't enough to be your creator. I had to become the firstborn of creation. This is an up-close God. This is a personal God. This is a God who wants to be involved in your business. He wants to get up in your business because he wants to bring to you the wealth of the riches of his grace from heaven. He wants to pour out his presence. Now, this isn't going to be, a, I had a whole outline, Sharon, I'm not going to go through that right now. I'm just going to share some, some quick thoughts with you of how close God wants to be with you and how close he wants to share his heart with you. It wasn't enough to be your judge, your jury, and your advocate. I had to serve your sentence. It wasn't enough to be your arms dealer. I had to become your weapon. It wasn't enough to be your conductor. I had to become your instrument. It wasn't enough to be your seamstress. I had to become your garment, your robe, your mantle. It wasn't enough to be your physician. I had to feel your pain and become your medicine. It wasn't enough to be your composer. I had to become your love song. Because I'm in love with you. 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 The Lord says, I'm in love with you. 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 It wasn't enough to, to be your script writer. I had to become your script. It wasn't enough to be your chauffeur. I had to become your transportation. It wasn't enough to be your provider. I had to become your provision. It wasn't enough to be your high priest. I had to become your sacrifice. Jesus, thank you. It wasn't enough to be your dream giver. I had to become your dream. It wasn't enough to be your peace bringer and your peacemaker. I had to become your peace. It wasn't enough to be your lover. I had to become your love wasn't enough to be your war strategist and your tactical specialist. I had to become your frontline warrior. I even became your armor. It wasn't enough to be your artist. 
I had to become the paint on the canvas of your life. Are you seeing how close he is to you? It wasn't enough to be your inspiration. I had to become your passion. It wasn't enough to be your farmer. I had to become your seed. It wasn't enough to be your author. I had to become the word in your heart and the language on your tongue. Whew. I feel something happening right now. It wasn't enough to be your enough. I had to become your more than enough. Whew. Are you, you sensing what I'm sensing right now? I long to be your encourager, but more than that, I want to be your courage. I long to be your strengthener, but more than this, I want to be your strength. I long to be your thought provoker, but more than that, I want to be your fondest thought and your most precious memory. Whew. Let him breathe up upon you this morning. Let him breathe upon you this morning. Let him saturate every one of these words that have been spoken over you this morning and seal it. You could remember all of it if you wanted to. We have to hear things seven times to even begin to get it. But we have by osmosis begun to receive not words, but the word. We have not just heard a word. We have heard from the word this morning. And you will walk out of this room and you'll say, oh man, I got to do this and I got to do that and I need to change this and I need to change that. You are not walking out of this place away from the Word. The Word that ushered you in here this morning will usher you back to the place where you set priorities. I'm telling you, there is a living Word, a rhema Word that is not simply a, a bunch of letters. It is a person. I'm telling you, the living word is here. And he's flowing across this room right now. Thank you, Jesus. He's healing right now. He's restoring right now. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. He's healing the lining of someone's stomach right now. I'm telling you, he's, he's coming against migraine headaches that come over and over and over. He's healing an ulcer condition in your stomach right now. He's restoring your mind. He's restoring rest to you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Whew. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Heavenly Father. I just believe that the same Holy Spirit that hovered over the darkness that brought order in the midst of chaos, that caused things that were out of line to come into alignment, is going to do that for you. He's going to show you in your business where things have fallen apart, where things are not together. He is just going to, I'm telling you, there's some folks that are just wrestling. You're wrestling with business. You're wrestling with weariness. You're feeling inadequate and the Holy Spirit is beginning to release a word over you right now. A, a word of confidence. I'm telling you, He is releasing a strength to you and a stamina to you. Whew. Somebody just begin to receive it right now. Begin to receive the Holy Spirit right now. The closeness of this living God. Breathe upon these words and cause them to rise up in our spirit. He's giving you the ability to hear like you've never heard before. He's causing your eyes to see with an ability, even in the business and in the home, to see what you've not seen before. Thank you, Jesus. I've just handed out to you a little card. It's, a, it's kind of a, a bookmarker that you can use. Um, this bookmarker um, on, the, on the front has I am munitions that you can just go through and look up these scriptures and you can make these confessions. On the back, I don't know if you can read this or not, but uh, I'd like to try to read this together. And this is just kind of a, an affirmation of who you are and what God's called you to be. Can we do this together? I am a winner like my father. I am confident with a confidence that is not of this world. I am more than meets the eye. I am more than a random happening. I am more than the sum of my parts. I am more than just another human being. I am a miracle and a miracle in the making. I am a one-of-a-kind brand. 
I am the most unique me in all the universe. I am made in my Father's image. I am fully accepted by God. I am sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. I am free from bondage, oppression, and addiction. I am loved, therefore I have the ability to love others. I am not better than anyone else, but I am just as valuable as everyone else. I am ready and able for every task, every battle, and every opportunity. I am filled with courage, boldness, and zeal. I am an eternal being, bought with a price. I am always welcome to sit at my Father's table. I am absolutely secure and protected under the shadow of the Almighty. I am engraved in the palm of my Father's right hand. I am the apple of my Father's eye. I am content in every situation and every circumstance. I am completely affirmed by my Father God. I am rooted in faith grounded in hope, and established in love. I am entirely, internally, externally, and eternally whole. I am free from all guilt, shame, and bitterness. I am the equivalent to the requirement through Christ Jesus. I am strong and determined like my Father. I am full of creativity, ingenuity, and innovative ideas. I am at rest, at peace, and totally satisfied when I am still in my Father's presence. I am resourced, equipped, and prepared for my assignment. I am beautified with a beauty that is more than skin deep. I am taking charge of my reactions and my responses by surrendering them to God. I am always learning, always growing, always advancing. I am alive on purpose, for a purpose, and with a purpose. I am led, but I am not driven. I am blessed to be a blessing. Whew. Wow. What an affirmation from Father God. I want you to take this with you, and I want you to begin to decree this over your life. When you're doing this, this, uh, this Shabbat, when you're doing the time of peace, and you're speaking some blessings over your household, if you feel led of the Lord, I want you to take this as a gift from, from our family to your family and decree this blessing over your household and over your life. Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that you've spoken today. I seal the work of the Holy Spirit right now. Father, we're going to meditate on your word. We're going to go back and hear what it is that you want us to do. We've heard lots of things, but there's one or two things that we need to do immediately. There's a couple things, Father God, that we need to begin to start doing on a regular basis and become a habit in our life. And there are some things that you want to you give us big ideas for down the future. And some of them are so big, they're going to scare us. But Lord, we're going to just trust you in it. And we're going to hear your voice and we're going to walk in your ways. I thank you, Lord, if there's anybody in this room that has not said yes to the love of Jesus and has never known you to be that God who's so close that you're like the paint on the canvas of our lives. If there's anybody here that wants to say yes to Jesus and wants to invite you on a deeper level to walk with him, maybe you don't even know what it means, but you're just saying, you know what, something's happening. I sense something I've not sensed. I want to go to another level. Maybe, maybe you've been walking with the Lord, but you haven't realized that you need to invite him to be the senior partner, the CEO, the president of your corporation. Maybe you need to make him the head of your household. I don't know what it is today, but if God is speaking to you, nobody looking around, no, no, nobody looking around right now, but if God is speaking to you to walk with him on a deeper level, and you just want to say, Lord, I, I want a merger with you. I want a merger and an acquisition. I want to, I want to connect with you on a whole nother level. Lord, if this thing is real, if it's real, and it's as real as they're talking about, I want more of that. If God is speaking to you on the count of three, just right where you are, just lift your hand up as a sign to God. Yes, I, I, I want to I wanna connect with you. One, two, three. Yes, yes, yes. We're just saying yes to you, Jesus. We're not saying yes to a bunch of rules and regulations. We're not saying yes to traditions of men. We're just saying yes to Jesus right now. So would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I surrender to you. I surrender my inadequacies. I surrender my failures. I give you my life. Lord, I need you. I believe. I choose to believe. 
you died for me and you rose again. I make you my senior partner. Lead me, Lord. I give you every area of my life for now and eternity. And everybody said, Amen. Hallelujah. And so we raise.